Evan, we're back here again. 500 over, what, 500 episodes now for me and all that good stuff. So I appreciate you coming back on the podcast. Let's go, man. And thank you for your kindness. Um, we had to schedule, I think, last week, and uh, I canceled on you like with an hour notice or half an hour notice. And I was in, a, I was in, a, I had a migraine that was just getting worse the whole day. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I don't want to cancel on Rory. We got to make this happen. So I'm popping Advil's and uh, I'm sitting down. I get up and I was like almost fall over. Uh, and like, ah, nah, like it's now more of a, a disservice to Rory to show up and be like terrible <laughs> than, <laughs> than wait. And so anyway, thank you for your patience and kindness and uh, giving me the grace and excited to be back. Listen, my man, listen, it's always love and I get it. Things happen. Sometimes we don't feel all the best, you know what I mean? And things like that. And it, it's the life of a content creator, business, man, you know, women, whoever, you know what I mean? And things like that. So we're here. I want to jump right into the conversation. Let's talk about how can content creators stop overthinking and create action right now today? Uh, a couple things. The first is I'm a recovering perfectionist, so I get it. Um, it took me 350 videos before I didn't absolutely hate my own content. I couldn't watch it back. Like 350 public videos before I couldn't watch it back. And 700 public videos until I started to, like I inspired myself on a video. Like, oh, that video. It's like, that's, I'm starting to get this. 700 videos later. Uh, so I, I completely get it. Um, the two things that have helped me, one is I've, I've shortcutted my brain and I tell myself that great ideas flow through me. And the fact that I thought of the idea means I'm going to go do something about it. Instead of over judging, over correcting, over planning, over researching, should I do this? Should I do this? Because we get these great ideas, right? And we're bold and powerful and courageous. And then the next day we wake up is like, that's, that idea is crazy. That's too, I can't do that. I'm, there's no way. And so it's like, okay, just trust that great ideas flow through you. And the intent is good and, and just do something about it. Let's take the first step, make it. Um, so that's really helped. And then the second one is um, whenever I focus on myself, is, it usually doesn't work out. Uh, focus on the audience. Like fo you're trying to serve. What's the intent? You're trying to help. I, I mean, I wrote a book called Built to Serve. We are all built to serve. And when you can think about, you know, if you're nervous about coming on camera because, you know, you have a pimple on your nose or whatever, it's like, but, like your video today might change somebody's life. And if 50 people watch it, maybe for one person, like that's a life changing message that they need to hear. And whether that's true or not, I'll tell myself that it's true. And then that gives me the confidence to like, okay, it's not about me. It's not about my pimple. It's not about whatever. I got to go out and serve. Yeah, so those things help a lot. And that's what you got to do. It's overcoming adversity. I always say that, you know what I mean? And we have it all inside of us to just get the job done. Doesn't matter if it's one person to a thousand people. To even a million people, you know what I mean? And things like that. So we just have to push past, you know? Yeah. And listen, if it sucks, cool. Like, it doesn't mean that you suck. It just means that it sucks. And how do you get better? Well, you do more. Like, why do you think your first, whatever content creation you're trying to do with podcasts or art or whatever, like, why do you expect your first thing to be great? It's going to suck. Awesome. How do you get better? You practice. You keep doing more. So if you can release the expectation of you being great, like the challenge is people know what looks good. We have, you have good taste. Like if you're going to start a podcast, who's your favorite, who would like your top three goats of podcasting, Rory? Right now? Yeah. The you, goats. You. Me. Wow. Okay. Button, okay. And um, the last one would be Patrick Beth Davis. Okay. Well, that's very kind of you. But if it's me, Joe and Patrick, okay. If you know what looks good, you could look at that trio and say, man, like, Okay, those guys, I, I, I aspire to be like them. I'm not them yet, but like if they're A plus, I'm like a B minus, you know? Like I think I could pull out B minus from their A plus. And then you go and you make your first episode and it sucks. It's not B minus, it's like F. Like you freeze up, you get scared, you lose your questions, your microphone dies, Riverside crashes, whatever. It's like a, just a complete train wreck. And you realize, oh, I'm not a B minus at all. Like I... I really suck at this thing. And that's where a lot of people quit. But like we just expect, because you have good taste and you know what looks good, we expect to be able to get close to that on our first shot, which like is never going to, that's, that's delusional. That's not going to happen. So I just go in expecting to suck. But it means, I don't, I don't interpret that as I suck as a person. 
I'm awesome as a person for trying this new scary thing that I've never done before. I haven't gone to school with. Nobody's taught me. And I'm out here trying. Like the willingness to fail and try is the inspiration. And then every time you do it, you get a little bit better. So I think we just have too much judgment on ourselves, um, too much expectations out of the gate. And especially the more, the more uh, you know what looks good and the more you're a fan of the craft, usually the harder it is and the more overthinking and perfectionist you are. Well said. And I feel like it speaks to the influx of these new programs and systems that are out here. You know, you got AI, everybody's using AI and things like that. Instagram's one platform, all these different platforms. But I feel like content creators struggle with how to find their ideal way. Do I just stay on this platform and just keep going or do I just start merging and going on all these other ones? What would you say to content creators right now? Mm, I would lean more to heart than head. Like lead with the heart and then your head can help you plan the strategy. So if a content creator, like your genius is going to be making something from your heart, from your soul, making something that like needs to be said, making something that you're talking to 20 year old you, you know, like what is 20 year old you make content for that person? Cause lots of 20 year old yous out there in the world right now and they're lost and they need help and they, they may not learn from Elon Musk or Tony Robbins or whoever, but they'll learn from you because you have a similar story to them. Um, as soon as you start being too strategic, like if the reason to do it is strategy, you're going to lose because somebody's out there loving it. So I would start with, well, what do you love doing? What, what platform do you naturally spend more time on yourself? I love YouTube. Like I'm just, I'm on YouTube. I love, I'm a visual learner. I like to see stuff. The fact that we're doing this, if this was a podcast, this is going to be a podcast too, right? This is going to iTunes. Of course. Yeah. 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 It's going everywhere. Okay. But if, I've done iTunes podcasts where the, where the camera's off for both of us and I struggle because I can't see the person. And so if it's audio only, my eyes are closed. I'm, I'm just I have to be so focused because auditory is the worst way for me to learn. I subscribe to zero podcasts. I listen to zero audiobooks. Uh, it's just the slowest way for me to learn. I need to be able to see. And so YouTube is the best place for me. Wherever you're naturally hanging out, if you're hanging out on Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn or YouTube or wherever, like start there. You're already naturally inclined to be there. So start there. And it may not be like the best long term ongoing strategy, but like it doesn't matter. There's so much opportunity for everybody on whatever platform you want to pick. So the starting point wouldn't be a head question. It would be a heart question. Like podcasts might be blowing up and like that's the number one thing to do. But if I made my decision to make content on audio instead of video, I'm not going to win. It's because I don't enjoy it enough. Well said. Well said. Well, speaks in, it also sorry, speaks to failure, right, and learning experience. Explain that to content creators because I feel like they think that they're putting out all this content, but they're not seeing the resources from it. It could be monetization. I feel like monetization is such the biggest thing. But it's like the skill set has to come first. You know what I mean? To cook a great meal, you got to have the right ingredients or it ain't going to taste good. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about yeah. the ingredients that they can really deep dive into. Yeah. I, well, I still suck at making a great meal. So I'm glad I have my wife and other great chefs around me. But uh, <laughs> but <laughs> ingredients for this, um, I start with purpose. Like, do you know why you're doing it? Because if you don't, you're going to quit because it's going to be too hard. So uh, most of us want to talk to the younger version of ourselves. And if you can actually connect to that, you'll be a lot more patient. Um, two, when you're looking at the results, I'd look at uh, just change my perspective around it. Um, I remember like I get 50 views on a video and most people would think, oh man, like that sucks. You only got, you spent an hour making this video and like 50 people saw it. Okay, but like if you went to a library or a YMCA or you know some uh, some speech and you had to talk in front of fifty people, you'd be really nervous. You'd be really excited. Oh my god, there's fifty people here who are gonna listen to me speak. We just did the same thing online, but we think that that's a failure. But speaking in person to fifty people is like some some big thing you're nervous about. So just flip the perspective. Assume that for one person's what they badly needed right now, um, and then just focus on how do I get better. You're like, how do you, and I, I mean, I'm speaking to myself. The only thing I had going for me, Rory, was that I just kept going because I, I did not watch my own videos back to try to get better. Uh, I couldn't watch them back. I was too critical of myself. 
I don't, I don't know why I kept going. I just kept going. I, I felt like somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna find this valuable. I look at the comments and people would leave comments, but I couldn't watch my own stuff back. I would have gotten better faster if I watched it back with a more loving eye instead of only the critical eye. Um, so luckily I just kept going and now we're here, you know, started from the bottom. Uh, <laughs> but I think too many people are too critical and looking at their stuff and just recognize that that's step one. And if you keep getting, keep putting in the reps on anything, you're going to get stronger. You're going to get better. You can get better quickly. You can get better quickly, but step one is probably going to not be great. And that's okay. But like pat yourself on the back and say, I started, look at me. This is awesome. I think it speaks to believing in yourself also too. just believe. You know what I mean? You're not, like, I mean, you mean, I'm not going to argue with you on belief, dude. Of course. There's <laughs> <laughs> a play on words. You know what I mean? But you got to believe, just believe everything that you got going on, you know? Yeah. And there's going to be times I feel like instead of chasing that perfect video, mm -hmm. it's always not the perfect video that actually gets the most numbers. If you're really about numbers, it's sometimes that video that just may be that raw take and everybody's just like, yo, that I feel that. And you see the comments and then you see the emails, then you see the DMs. Yeah. And then it's so much more rewarding. You know what I mean? Because it can be all the money that we have in the world. But what's the most reward? How do you impact? How do you touch somebody? You know? Yeah, that. Um, so I, I, I said it took me 350 videos before I wasn't completely embarrassed by myself. Video 350 was um, was super raw. Like I was at an event. I was I was hosting a mastermind and um, I was giving advice to everybody. And like for whatever reason, nobody was listening to me. I wasn't communicating my thoughts well. And I left. And it was like so pissed off at myself that it was so clear what advice they should follow and it wasn't landing and I was so upset. And so I just, I had a, it was super late at night. I just sit on the floor and have my laptop open and film from my webcam and just the lighting is terrible. The audio is like, it's, it's not great, but I just, just let it go. And like, that was the video. I was like, Hey, this is, okay, we're getting some emotion now in the videos instead of just robot Evan at the front of the camera. Uh, so yeah, what, one of the things that I'll teach uh, my students is whenever you're emotional film, uh, and it could be a positive emotion or a negative emotion, whether you even release the video or not, but just getting in the habit of articulating an emotion in words because you're feeling some kind of way, but we often don't know how to express ourselves well. And then what people often do is wait a week or wait till filming day and then you might have the perfect words, but the, the heart is gone because that happened three days ago and now you're not feeling that thing anymore. So whether it's um, inspiration or courage or compassion or gratitude um, or, or anger or jealousy or whatever, just get in the practice of in the moment trying to articulate it because it'll be the less perfect words, but it'll have more heart to it and it'll, it, it will do better. It's better that you mess up and it'd be emotional, then you'd be perfect with the perfect script and no emotion. And that took me, dude, years to, to, to believe in, to, to unwind. I mean, if people can figure that out faster, holy cow, you're on the fast track. Oh, for sure. And it also speaks to success, right? What do you feel like is that one trait every successful person, man, woman, child, should yeah. really develop and really anchor into? I mean, we've studied more successful people than most people in terms of the work that I put out on content and top 10 rules of success and belief just comes up over and over and over again. Like people who win, they believe in themselves when nobody else does and people think they're crazy and someone like you is not supposed to be doing something like this. Um, and that's why I try to put out content at scale. That's why I love coming on shows like this because the right message hits the right person at the right time. It just shifts their belief. Like, huh, you know what? Maybe I can do it. And that changes everything. Uh, it's the number one rule for success is that you need to believe in the thing that you're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. But there's that failure that comes into play too, you know? Oh, of course. I mean, if, you, if you're not failing, then you're not trying. Like, what's a life that you never fail? True. You're, you're repeating the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again, right? Like, you're just living Groundhog Day, a photocopy of the same day, which is what we all hate. It's like who wants to, especially this audience of creatives, this, why don't want to have a nine to five job at some corporation where you're just doing the same thing day in, day out. 
there's no failure there, but there's no growth. And so creativity is messy and is not perfect. And, and a bunch of figuring stuff out, like you can't be productive and creative at the same time. And that's okay. It's, it's supposed to be messy and you can have, you can have productive moments. You can have creative moments, but, um, it's like, how do I, how do I get more efficient? Like, well, it, it's not like creativity is not efficient. They're complete opposite. If I need to be creative for something, man, I'm going for a walk. I'm like booking off four hours in my day. I'm getting outside <laughs> in nature. You know, it's like, I need, that's not efficient, but I'm going to get hit with some brilliance that I'm going to pour into my business or a person that I'm trying to help out. Um, and when we try to mix the two together, people just, again, it's just expectations. I think people have the wrong expectations and then they judge themselves too harshly and then mm -hmm. they stop. Mm -hmm. Before we get out of here though, my friend, and I always appreciate you. I appreciate your content. Always love seeing what you post, you know, and, and, and listening to it and things like that. But speak to gratitude, close us out, gratitude. How does that play a role in the ultimate measure of success? Uh, I would split it into two. I think gratitude um, for ourselves. You know, I think especially if you're a perfectionist and overachiever and um, can't look back on with kindness on the stuff that you've done, gratitude for yourself. Uh, it's, it's hard. Like it's self-love is hard. It's shocking like we see so many people with bravado and ego and everything else but like i think everybody actually needs a little more kanye in them um i have a mug <laughs> I you say that. Got me. <laughs> uh the, i wish i had it in front of me i don't think i do but that says like uh i believe in myself like kanye believes in kanye <laughs> and for all the crazy that kanye might be like the level of self-belief that's it's it's an inspiration at least it is for me and um I think we could all use a little bit more, a little bit more of that. Maybe not go all the way, you know, to that land. But um, I think people have a hard time re recognizing things that they've done, um, the willingness to show up. Uh, we're always just nitpicking on the on the things that didn't work out and how we screwed up and how we can get better, especially the achievers. Um, so self gratitude, like, hey, I turned on the camera and I posted a video today, or whatever was difficult that then you ended up doing. Um, something that uh, a practice that I do with my son, who's um, 15, is uh, every day figure out what is he proud of himself for. It's like, what are you proud of yourself today? And I, I mean, I don't care what it is for the most part, as long as he actually feels proud of himself. And so just having a practice of every day finding something, because I mean, a lot of days like, oh, nothing. Like, no, no, you got <laughs> You got to come up with something. You got to And he probably hates me for it. You know, at least right now. It's like, oh, <laughs> okay. Um, but I think it's uh, I think it's a good thing to be able to teach. And like, it's something we can do ourselves. Like, what are you grateful for it, that you did? Not just that you received or somebody else did for you, but you personally. Like, how are you grateful for how you showed up um, and not not being overly critical? And then the second is like gr gratitude and for others and, and, you know, the kindness. Like, I mean, I started this episode saying, thank you for your kindness that you showed me for, I felt bad. I like almost never cancel on things. Um, and I felt bad that I did that and I'm just grateful for your kindness and how you showed up. Um, you know, like, I've been on the receiving end of that too. It's like, I'm already, I had my, my first interview with Tony Robbins canceled on me the day of. Uh, and stuff like that happens, right? It's not, not to throw shade at anybody. Um, but I've been on the receiving end of that and it sucks when you're all like ready to go and got the camera set up and you're maybe nervous for a question and whatever. And then it's like, you get that message, like, sorry, can't happen. Um, so I was, I was just grateful for you and, and just practicing telling people, you know, like I wanted to make sure it was the first thing we said on, I was going to tell you that off camera. And then I said, no, no, record. And I told you that when we, when we went live, just so that, uh, you hear it and, and the audience can hear it too. So uh, I just think it keeps you, I think it keeps you grounded. Um, I think there's a, there's a level of people who think, well, if I'm too grateful for what I have, I'll be complacent and then I won't push for more. And it's like, it doesn't happen. Like achievers, you're going to achieve anyway. You're going to achieve anyway. So why not have a little more uh, balance and a little more grounded, a little more happiness along the way. So it's not just a fight all the way up. You won't get complacent. And showing yourself some gratitude and showing the people around you some gratitude and not just feeling it, but saying it. Um, it's just, 
I mean, I still need to get better at it. I'm pract- I'm, a, I'm a work in progress every day too. We all have to be. We all have to be. And that's just what makes us resilient. That's what makes us human. You know, we're not all android robots like Dragon Ball Z, ladies and gentlemen. We're all human. You know what I mean? And that's why I appreciate you, Evan. I appreciate you coming back on the show. We're 500 plus episodes now. Let's go. And uh, nothing but love for you, brother. We'll talk soon. Let's go. Thank you, Rory. Appreciate you, man.